my roommate is another uh, really big lesson for me in terms of what I do, what I have the ability to do for people. My roommate, uh, my second day there, it was my second day there, and he came in on my second day. And he, was, he sat alone at his own table, and I saw him, and I was like, hmm, you know, well, we're all in this together, we're all kind of crazy together, so uh, I'll just sit next to this kid and ask him where he's from and ask him why he's here. And so I, I, I started to connect with him. I didn't think anything of it. I just wanted to be nice and just help him feel welcome. And then I found out that he was in my room, he was my roommate. Uh, he was in there for alcohol and he, I guess he sort of talked about suicide a little bit but that's but that was I guess enough uh, for the people surrounding him to put him into a mental institution, I don't know. Was, as I got to know him more, uh, I found out that he liked to draw. He's an artist and he's really good at it too. And I still have some of the, the collaborations that I did with him in that room. Um, but he saw some of my hip hop monks and my, my, my affirmations that I tell myself when I was writing and I'd be like, uh, peace, love, Peace, love, tranquility, strength, whatever, from my mind, body, and soul, because that's what I want for myself. So he saw that, and he, I guess he really liked it. And, um, you know, I just opened up to him more and just listened to him and the things that he's go through. I, I'd ask him all these questions about who he is and where he comes from. We, we too, both of us, would do collaborations for everybody, for all the other kids that were in that mental institution. Come time when I had to leave, uh, he wrote me the longest note uh, that anyone out of everyone has in there. And it was strange because this guy, he talks like, oh yeah, man, like, I, yeah, 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 I don't know, it's, it's cool, you know, yeah, I drop, you know? Like, that's how he talked. But when he wrote me that note, it was so articulate and so, like, deep and heartfelt. That, that was interesting, and just the things he would say to me. I've never had a friend like you outside of these walls. You've shown me things that I'll take beyond these walls. Like you care about everybody. He, he said, thank you so much for coming up to me and talking to me at lunch that one day. Like that, I, I didn't even realize that that was just me being me, just me being like a loving, caring human being. Um, that was uh, something that I keep close to my heart too. And all these notes I also have always in my wallet. There was this little girl named Megan and she was nine years old, nine years old. And she was in there because she hit her cousin in the head with a remote control. And so that was reason enough for her parents to send her into this mental institution. And there's just this little, cute, loving, caring girl who wrote kind things on post-it notes and put them on the backs of people. Like, you're nice, you're cool, on my back, uh, just post-it notes. And she'd give them to everybody. She loved Vaseline, like, she needed to have moist lips but it like covered her whole mouth. I don't, she was like the baby of everyone in there. And I was kind of like the older brother that was in there that kind of just took care of everyone and just listened to everyone and their stories. And this little girl, Megan, there was a day where she was looking through some magazines and everyone was like around her. And everyone was like just playing with her like, is this guy cute? And then she was like, no, is this guy cute? In a magazine, like a celeb magazine or something that we're allowed to have magazines. Is this guy cute? No. Is this guy cute? No. And then one of the gr other girls in there says, Is Paris cute? And then Megan, little Megan says, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, that was one of, definitely one of the more lighthearted uh, things that happened in there. Oh, I was cute. And little nine year old girl thought I was cute. That's cool. The low self esteem, that kind of meant a lot to me. Um, <laughs> Oh, and that guy who's a skater with the long hair. Um, when I first got into the mental institution, he was like, I don't like you. You could punch me, but I don't like you, blah, blah, blah. It slowly went from I don't like you to I feel you. Like he, he would fist bump me because I would, again, actively participate in all the group sessions and I would give feedback to everybody who talked, everybody who shared a story and everybody who you know, reached out because uh, a lot of them just stayed quiet. He would listen to the things that I had to say, and I would share all my experiences with um, like hating myself, suicidal thoughts, uh, not being good enough for my parents or whatever. And then he, he went from, I don't like you to, I feel you. Like each time I would say something, he'd be like, I feel you, man. I feel you. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he left, because uh, I skate too, um, I aggressive skate, I was like, yeah, man, if we ever meet outside of these walls, like let's collaborate or something. He's like, yeah, man, I'm so down. Like <laughs> he got... He started to like me as well. I know, I know I'm kind of telling random stories of all the people that I met in there, but 
Um, another note, we'd have a daily therapy meetings with a particular therapist. Didn't really help me that much. I was kind of enjoying myself in that mental institution, by the way. I told them about my YouTube channel and they actually looked and watched all my YouTube videos on my YouTube channel. And then one of the psychiatrist therapist guys actually took me out of the room. I was supposed to stay in this one big room with one TV and a bunch of chairs and uh, magazines, paper, pens, whatever, just to keep us occupied. But that's where we were. And one of the therapist guys uh, went in there and took me aside, one, took me to my room and just wanted to have a conversation. He was like, Paris, uh, can I talk to you for a second? And then I was like, sure, okay. So we started to have a conversation and he said, out of all the kids in here, you're probably the only one that seems to have the most going for him outside, like when, when you leave. And then I was like, oh, uh, I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think so. And then he went off to explain. He actually compared me to a director. I don't, I don't know if her, the name escapes me. But he said, you remind me of a director. Uh, he actually got him, he purposely got himself admitted into a mental institution just so he could find inspiration. So he compared me to another artist. Because in you know, the, way, the way I talk about things, like I'm very, I, I have the ability to be angry. I have the ability to be loving. I have the ability to be so many things. I can experience, I can experience all different facets of consciousness. And um, everything is a means for me to be inspired. Uh, so like when he said that, I was like, whoa, it's like, that was noticed. <laughs> I, I appreciate people. I, I like getting to know people. Some of the girls had crushes on me in there, uh, which I think was pretty interesting. Um, some of them, some of the girls, like 13 years old, like cuts all over her arm. It was, it was so, you know, it, I felt for everybody in there. Like she was actually lesbian. She, 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 I experienced like a, les, a, a lesbian 13 year old girl. Um, she wrote a note for me saying, I think I'm starting to like boys again. I, I, I think I like you. Can you respond yes or no? And then I'm like, or do you like me back? Yes or no? And I got that. I'm like, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't know how to feel. I mean, I, I'm, I'm older, but like it was just like, huh? People can like me. <laughs> I'm sorry that these stories are kind of just everywhere, but I don't know. For some reason, I just felt the, I felt the drive to share this story today. My, my multiple stories that occurred within this mental institution. When I left, there were people who cried that I was leaving. Again, notes were written to me by my roommate, by like so many people in there. Transcending, when I left the mental institution, when, when I was finally released, and that was on my birthday as well. I was released when I turned 18. Being in that in just one room for five days. It felt like I was in there for months. It was only for like a week, but it felt like I was in there for such a long time. And when I was released, I was like, I was so like information overload. Like when I was in the car, I was like, cars, there's cars. And then I was like, buildings, it's so crazy. Like I, I couldn't, it was just taking me so long to process everything. I was like looking at my hands, I was like, and the background, you know, like my hands are in the foreground and the background, my hands in a different background. It was like, it was so crazy to me. But I get the connections I made in that mental institution drove so deep to where um, that, remember that little girl Megan I told you about? She somehow was able to call me and they're not allowed to do this, but she was able to call me and I was able to hear from everybody in that mental institution. Cause once we're, once we're gone, we're gone. We're not allowed to have contact with anyone that we meet in there unless um, you know, we just happened to meet each other, but we're not allowed to exchange numbers or information. But yeah, this girl, Megan, she was still in there. She wanted to call me. She somehow figured out a way to call me to see how I'm doing. And yeah, I heard from everyone. Everyone was like, Paris, 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 is that you? Hi, I miss you so much. Or like, whatever, uh, I, I wish you were here, blah, blah, blah. Everyone was so excited and everyone wanted to like say something to me. And it was, it was, Interesting. I guess I felt like sharing this story because there are times where I feel really down on myself still. There, it goes in different phases. I can be on the on the peak of my spirituality, on the peak of my um, my confidence, and not cockiness, but like my confidence in that, uh, like I'm doing what I want to do and I want to share and I want to I want to uh, 
create and just keep being me and nothing can go wrong. And there are times where I'm like, me is not worth anything. I'm just, I suck. <laughs> and when I, when I get into those phases, this mental institution experience is something that I always refer back to and reflect on because it's a, you know, it's something that's, it's a reminder for myself that I have the ability to reach people. Maybe I'll share some more stories if any more come to mind. There's so much happened in that mental institution, so much that taught me about what I'm here to do, connect and to share and yeah. If you guys have any questions for me regarding the mental institution experience, uh, don't be afraid to comment. Um, that's all I can think about right now. That's all I really have the energy to talk about right now. But thank you guys for watching and listening to this story. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, um, don't be afraid to let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll try to make more videos soon. I'm just in this, this place right now in my head where I'm just climbing my way out of it right now. So, until the next one. Later.